What's up guys? Welcome back to Backroad Driver. We're the Miser Brothers. I'm Brad. And I'm Sam. Today we're going to show you my wife's new 2021 Lincoln Navigator. We're going to go through all the numbers, what we paid, what the payment came out to, how we structured the deal, and we're going to show you the coolest features on this vehicle. And I'm also going to tell you why we got back into a Navigator. We had a Navigator, we traded off to something else, we'll talk about that, and then why we came back to a Navigator, even though they're about to do a mid-cycle refresh for 2022, why did we go ahead and get this 2021? Let's get into it. Sam and I are here at Harper Auto Wash in Knoxville. It's like a super premium drive-through subscription deal. It's good for my wife because they treat her really good. She can get a good interior and exterior and they're very careful with the paint on the car. Um, we're also, I didn't mention, we're gonna talk about what mods we may do. And I know, like, he's got the sticker rolled out. Showing the sticker here. It's a $90,000, just right over $90,000 car. Um, pretty expensive and we're rolling through right now. A lot of people would freak out about even taking it through a car wash, but this thing is super premium. Um, it's very careful. I mean, they run way more expensive cars through here all day long. So we'll go over that window sticker here in just a second. But on the mods, we've got some pretty good ideas and I know it sounds crazy to mod a brand new, you know, ooh, look at that color. That color foam actually works better than regular colored foam, doesn't it? No. no. Oh. Darn. We pay extra for that. No, the lights don't do anything. The lights don't do anything? No. They just get you excited. <laughs> as soon as we get this bad boy cleaned up, we're going to talk about mods as well. And that when we say mods, like we actually may do some performance. Yeah, we're getting we're getting slapped down right now. We're probably going to do some performance mods. Um, this is our second Navigator. I've also had the Raptor and I've never done mods on them because when I got both the Raptor and the Navigator, it was so new and those mods were so new and I was nervous about what would happen. But now that you've had a lot of high output EcoBoost engines modded with tunes, intercoolers, all those things, uh, wheels are not new to put wheels on a Navigator now. We won't be the first one to do that. I, mean, I didn't really want to be the first one. I wanted them to kind of have worked out what really works well and what rolls true and rolls normal because this is my wife's daily driver. It's what I drive on the weekends with the family. And so we want it to stay the ultimate travel vehicle, but you know we gotta put that back road driver flavor on it. After you come out of the wash bay over here, this is really cool. Oh, it's closing back on me. You come into this extra bay um, and they do all the vacuuming and the inside interior cleanup and the windows and all that good stuff. So really awesome. I wish everybody had one of these. I'm glad we do. Uh, big thumbs up to Harper Auto Wash, it's awesome. All right, so we showed you a sticker of 90 grand. We'll go over the options right here in just a second, but this is the new ride. It's an Asher Gray 2021 Lincoln Navigator Reserve. It's got a lot of cool options. We're gonna show you the gray interior here in just a second. We'll even run down the road in it. Uh, but let's talk about the numbers first, because a lot of you guys care about that stuff, and we're pretty transparent on this channel. This was a demo car, so it means uh, it was loaned out to the University of Tennessee's athletic department. One of the coaches was driving it, I won't tell you who, but. Uh, he put about 2,000 miles on the vehicle. He did curb both sides of the front wheels, even though it's got 360 cameras. Um, I wasn't real concerned about that because those wheels are probably gonna come off. We'll have them repaired and then we'll probably sell those takeoffs. They're really heavy and we're gonna replace them with something a lot lighter, most likely. We may just powder coat those, but we're probably gonna go lighter. So we ended up getting $2,000 off of MSRP. I know you guys think that might be crazy because you usually get a lot more off of that vehicle just straight up, but this had some miles on it and it did have a little wheel rash, which I wasn't concerned about. That's a good deal right now in 2021. Um, I'm gonna tell you what we came out of the, the Land Rover Discovery here in just a second. It might make more sense why I was willing to barely get anything off. And that's through our dealer, Ted Russell, Parkside Drive here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll talk more about them in a second. They are excellent to deal with. They're extremely fair. And I'm gonna tell you about the other cars and what they were able to give us for them. And it'll make more sense about why I deal with Ted Russell on Parkside all the time. Just excellent people all the way around outside of how awesome it is to buy Lincoln and that whole Lincoln experience. It's not a typical um, used car sales, just a terrible feeling when you get done type of experience. It's a premium experience. This is loaded up really good. It came with the 201A equipment group. So it's got a heads up display. The, the star and the grill is lit up. That's something my wife didn't have last time. Um, it, it just comes with a ton of equipment, guys, as a, as a reserve level vehicle. 
I think you can see that up here. Yeah, four by four reserve. So this is a four by four this time. I only had a two, two wheel drive last time. The seat configuration is different than what I had last time. And also got dark slate interior, uh, which is basically gray. There's about three shades of gray in here. Um, we've always had black vehicles and went with black because our kids are freaking morons and they get stuff everywhere. We will throw some black Lincoln rubber mats down in here that cover everything really well. So we'll get that utility type feel, um, but I'm digging the gray so far and I wasn't sure how my wife would like that, but it is a different, it's a different change up for us. It does, you can see the depth of the leather a little bit better than you can in black. It just looks a little bit more premium to me and it has gray wood in it, but we'll check that out in just a second. I'm just chilling over here next to this uh, rally spec Porsche Cayenne pretty cool looking vehicle if you like brad's new lincoln and you want to see more of content like this give this video a thumbs up and make sure you hit subscribe we traded in my wife's 2018 land rover discovery looked great it was a gray color awesome blacked out everything it drove like crap and it didn't bother her a whole lot but it's what i have to drive on the weekends with the family and i thought it drove like just the way the steering setup was was terrible so I wasn't digging it at all. I had to make a couple long trips in it and that was enough for me to say, screw it. I know they're doing a mid-cycle uh, refresh in 22 for this and a lot of things are gonna change on the front end and it'll be a better vehicle. It wasn't worth waiting six months for me to be able to get one of those if it even rolls out on time. So for me, going ahead and getting it now with all the trips we've got coming up, my kids are starting to play travel ball. It made more sense to go ahead and make that trade even though I knew what was coming up. We did trade also the GT350 Kong it's gone and let me tell you why i didn't need two mustangs i love my gt500 i loved the gt350 i loved the wrap on it i loved the gold wheels i loved everything about it i couldn't justify having two of them and i had to pick the one i loved the most and that's why i kept the 500 so the 350's gone but here's the good news we actually made about ten thousand dollars on that trade so you know we got 10 more than we paid for it originally we did get a great deal on it originally because we bought it before the big spike in car prices the way they are right now so with that extra i guess ten thousand dollars of being right side up we were able to put that towards this vehicle which substantially lowered our payments the other part of this trade was by trading in a discovery that we had paid the full taxes on about forty five thousand dollars and then trading in the 350 which we had paid taxes on about 61 we got over 70 for the 350 and we got our money back out of the discovery that meant no taxes on the new navigator and we ended up with a payment of about 1250 dollars over 75 months it's a car that we're going to drive for at least three or four years so we'll be close to even uh when that time comes and we've put you know 60 or 70 thousand miles on it driving down the road in this 21 navigator it's the same thing as 18 and up guys it's butter it's buttery smooth you don't hear anything outside. It's a big difference from, well, we've rented a couple of expeditions to take trips, nothing against the expedition. I kind of tried to talk my wife into that because it was 20 grand less, but you get a ton of sound deadening. You get a lot more pop than you do in the expedition. Um, it's a super premium steering experience. The way the wheel doesn't fight you, you've got a ton of tech that makes driving easier and more enjoyable. Um, air is in all the right places and the comfort of the seats is there so i can't say enough about how much of a premium driving experience that you have in this thing it ages and leaps and bounds above the land rover experience that was garbage compared to this next let's talk about some of the coolest features and what brought us back to a navigator after being out of one for just a few months um it's got a ton of premium stuff guys the drop down step right here is really cool but the number one feature that makes this vehicle i think one of the best weekend warrior family riding vehicles is the seats and it's not something i'll let sam talk to this but you can't get these seats in an f-150 you can get them in an aviator but they're a smaller version you can get something close to these seats in the limited or in an f-150 but i don't think you can get these seats it's pretty doggone comfortable i mean you can see how chill he is these there. are i mean they got some nice seats in that uh limited truck but they don't have these this seat has 30 way adjustability so without going through and boring you with all the different stuff this goes in out up and down off of a button this goes in and out this goes in and out uh this goes up and down back here up and down back here 
this goes out and in. I've got it set for me right now, so these are extended. They're like leg bolsters. They go up under your leg. Uh, yours are in right now. So Let me in tight. Pull that button. You see that, that settings over here? That's the settings. There's a ton of settings. Let me in. It's crazy. Yeah, go to that L right there. So that right there pushes that out under and Tim's leg. independent left or right. So you could have your left leg up higher than your right for a while and then switch it out if you get tired going down the road. It's pretty amazing what it's you crazy. can do over here. So I'm gonna show you these. Um, the, the number one thing, other than all the adjustability, plus you got lumbars, you can go through this setting and it shows up on the screen here. Um, let me go ahead and push the button. So if I push this button, I can make the bolsters tighter on the sides where I sit. I can make it tighter against my sides there. My wife likes that one. You can go lower lumbar, mid lumbar, high lumbar, and all those go in and out. But number one, and this is something I can't show you, Sam, push the uh, massage button. When you push that button, massage comes on. It's on high, it's massaging on his side. I'll go ahead and turn mine on as well. It's not weak. Like we've had a BMW before that had this feature. It was kind of weak. Uh, the Mercedes ones are okay. It's a couple of bladders that kind of fill up and fill, you know, go in and out and they don't really do much. This thing rolls all the way up and down your body. It's friggin' sweet while you're driving and it just kind of keeps you refreshed. So it, it feels like it's kneading. Um, it With doesn't feel like it's just a, a bladder or some, um, weak, weak, uh, pushing around or whatever. It actually feels like there's something in there rolling around kneading on you so uh, and while here. you're having that done you've got air blowing on both sides and i will say that ford has the best air conditioned seats in my and i we've been in a lot of stuff i've had air conditioned seats in a lot of different vehicles over the last i don't know 10 or 11 years since i was an adult and these actually blow cold air out a lot of your german stuff will actually just suck heat off of you but these, these actually ventilated. ventilated and they actually blow air onto you. And I think they make you a lot cooler. Ford did get rid of actual air conditioned seats back in 2015. Um, they had a lot of problems with that, trying to pump actual cold air through. But what they found out was just getting ambient air and blowing it through to the body feels way better yep. than, than you don't have swamp butt when you get there yeah. when you've been getting massaged and getting air blowed on you the whole time next i want to show you the trim uh this thing is is arguably the screen and everything is not as advanced as i'm gonna flip this over into excite mode so i've got some modes right here lincoln actually names it excite so i'm gonna flip this over and it will switch to four wheel all in excite mode see the 4a down here and it rips pretty good um, we'll talk about horsepower in just a second, but you got this gray wood Gray leather the carpet is another shade of gray uh, You got wood all across there wood down here. The speaker grills are all aluminum and they're all dutied up You got chrome everywhere um, You got the full pano roof um, The middle console for the kids in the back. We didn't have that on our last one. They're older now They can adjust their own air. They got plug imports they got their own drinks they can put all their junk in the middle console the third row is actually usable on this vehicle um, they sit back there a lot and we put grandparents in the middle it works out really really good there's just a premium feel in this navigator that's a head and shoulders above a lot of other vehicles the new escalade is a big step up but uh, i don't think they leapfrogged the navigator they'll have a cooler screen and they'll have some more advanced features i'm sure the one area where I wasn't willing to compromise. I mean, my wife was Escalade curious. It made me sick at my stomach for it to think that she would buy a GM, but someday we're probably gonna have a GM on this channel, guys. Um, I thought that might be it. But when I looked at power, it's 420 horsepower and 460 pounds of, torque. pounds of torque. That's not that much for one of these big vehicles. And that's, uh, they do have a diesel option that's even lower on horsepower. When you compare that to this high output EcoBoost engine, which is the same thing as in the Raptor, you're looking at 450 horsepower and 500 foot pounds of torque. So we're looking at 30 more horsepower and 40 more torque in this vehicle. The other thing that kind of bummed me on the Escalade, and a lot of people are doing this now, it's why Sam doesn't have a supercharger yet on his truck. The new F-150 can't be tuned yet. So you can't put a supercharger on it because you have to have a custom tune yep. or at least a base tune uh, from a manufacturer to be able to supercharge. The new Escalade is, has a locked up computer as well and it can't be tuned. 
the prior model could be, this one cannot. If I could have put a Whipple on a new Escalade, that would have been enticing because you can jump that horsepower way on up with a big uh, 6.2 liter V8, you know, giant displacement motor. I know that would have been a kind of a new thing to, to do. It's not been done a lot. In this vehicle, you already have the twin turbos, you already have the high output. Hennessy has done a 600 crank horsepower version of this for years. There's tons of high horsepower Raptors and lots of available parts. So I know this isn't exactly like the Raptor, but it's very close and it's not uncommon to tune these and to, and to do things to them. So we're gonna talk about mods here in just a second, but that was another um, consideration for me in going with this because just as it sits, it has more power than the Escalade, but it also has the ability to have a lot more power. Jumping in the back seat here, Sam and I both, kids have already stained the floor mats. We gotta get that rubber back here quickly. So this is, Sam had his front seat way back and you can yeah. see he's got a ton of room here. And then the third row passenger would even have a ton of room. This, this Navigator's third row is no joke. You've got air back there just for that row. You've got power back just for that row. So it's a really, that's not a terrible place to be. The middle row, I think, is the place to be. You don't have the, yeah, the super I had comfort this, seats. I had this way, way back. I was lounging like I was in a recliner up there and I, I could get, you know. Laid back still, right here. This could obviously go forward some. Yep. But I mean, Sam's 6'4", <laughs> sitting here and had it pushed back. And now a 6'4 guy back here and it still fits great. Or 5'11". <laughs> so you've got all your controls back here. Um, here you've got your air controls for the back. You've got all kinds of power back here. So the kids can plug all their stuff up. I'm not real big on kids having devices all the time. My kids neither one have cell phones, they're 10 and eight, but they do have pads because when we get in the car, I do like to talk to my wife. And if they're on their pads, I can actually talk to her and they're distracted and they're not asking when we're gonna be there and 55,000 other questions. So this is a nice place to be back here. Let's talk about the Lincoln experience. So there's a, I'm at Harper's Car Wash. Harper has excellent dealerships here in Knoxville and everything they have is super premium and it's a great place to get service done. A lot of Ford dealers get a bad rap for not having the best service departments. Um, our dealer is a new building with very good people. We do have Ford's service there and it is a great experience, but I've had some bad experiences at Ford dealers before. The Lincoln experience is hopped up to another level. You've got particular people that just deal with Lincoln customers. Uh, my service advisor does all Lincoln customers. They'll come pick this up service it and bring it back and leave my wife alone her car we don't take advantage of that a lot because this is in knoxville where we come to do a lot of stuff anyway so it's not a big deal for us to drop off and pick up they wash the car every time they do anything to it um, i would just say it's ford on steroids with a white glove treatment there's tons of other little perks concierge type stuff that we don't fool with because we're not i guess we're just not bougie enough um, to deal with all that but there is a different level and a different experience when you're dealing with a Lincoln. It's, it's available if you want to be bougie. Yeah, if you want to be pampered. And when we bought this, we had to fill out a piece of paper about what's your wife's favorite drink and what does she want when she shows up. So like they'll have her or whatever she likes to drink ready to go. What's her favorite snack? Like they really are detailed on the personal um, service when it comes to their Lincoln vehicles. And I think that's what people want these days. And so it's it's definitely a, a step up for Lincoln uh, from where anything in the Ford family has been in the past. What do you guys think about Brad's new Navigator? Comment down below, let him know what you think about it. So let's talk about modifications. Visual first, and then we'll talk about performance. Uh, chrome, some people love Chrome. And then there's guys like Sam who make sure they get the sport edition of anything so that they've got body colored uh, bumpers and those types of things. All these navigators come with chrome. You can get a blackout edition and you can get a black label and you'll get a lot of stuff blacked out at that point and you'll still have just a little chrome. And I'm not chrome averse. I love this Asher Gray. I think it goes great with the chrome, but I've got a question for you guys. And we're gonna show you some of the chrome pieces. Do you like chrome? Should we black all the chrome out? Or with this Asher Gray, that's got a little metallic in it, but it's a, it's, it's a, lighter lower metallic than carbonized gray okay should we go black chrome and the wheels would obviously match whatever we do on the vehicle uh, right now they've got a chrome and a gray look to the wheels but should we go just leave it like it is 
go black everything out, black wheels, black chrome, or black on the chrome, or should we go with the black chrome? I'll show that on the screen here so you'll kind of see what that is, but it's basically chrome that has a very dark black tint to it comes off a little gray. Black chrome would be something unique. It would be a one-off deal. It would go great with the Asher. I think you know which way I'm leaning. So vote below in the comments. Leave it chrome, black it out, or do black chrome. Let us know what you want to see. So the star lights up. You've got this chrome piece that bevels all the way around, and then you've got the actual kind of a satin finish. Um, some chrome here. You've got, this is, chrome with a little brushed on it here a little black back there body color here you do have a little slice of chrome here a little piece of chrome here obviously a big one that bands around the bottom the belt line is the big one it's metal and it's molded in there so that's not something you could take off the rest of this i mean i'm not going to take it off we'll probably just wrap it but you do have some chrome in the tail light that you're not going to be able to get rid of uh, piece of chrome here chrome letters that's about it the wheels they're not bad um this is what we had on our last navigator you could just powder coat these in black chrome or black performance so the navigator already has the high output 3.5 liter eco boost that's going to give you 450 horsepower and 500 foot pounds of torque. There's a lot of mods out there for that engine on the Raptor that are already exist. So um, it's really easy to take this up 70 horsepower and about 100 foot pounds of torque with just a tune, maybe an intake, some small things like that. You can squeeze some more horsepower out of this thing with some other modifications like turbo piping and um, a bigger intercooler. That's always a good idea if you're uh, cruising across country or something like that. It's gonna keep those temperatures down even on those hot days and allow you to run a lot more boost. So there's a lot of mods out there for this thing. We'll see where this goes. Uh, I'm not gonna get too crazy. I don't think he is anyway on this vehicle being that this is his family cruiser. He is gonna add some power to this thing and try to make it the most exciting, fun to drive family hauler that he could possibly create. Check another video out right now in the end card. Hey, we appreciate you guys watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Peace.